U.S. President Joe Biden is sending his national security advisor for talks with a senior Chinese official in Rome. AP's Ben Thomas has this report. The meeting comes amid concerns that China is amplifying Russian disinformation, including false claims that Ukraine has been running chemical and biological weapons labs with U.S. support. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan tells NBC's Meet the Press. It's a good tell that they may be on the cusp of doing it themselves. What we're here to do is to deny them the capacity to have a false flag operation, to blame this on the Ukrainians or on us. Sullivan also says the U.S. has made clear China should not help Russia work around sanctions or otherwise bail out its economy. We will ensure that neither China nor anyone else can compensate Russia for these losses. Ben Thomas, Washington. Tens of thousands of people have rallied in cities across Europe to protest against Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine. Small vigils also took place in Russia on Sunday despite a crackdown by authorities against such demonstrations. German trade unions called a large protest in Berlin where sunny weather boosted turnout. Many participants carried flags in the blue and yellow colors of Ukraine. Others bore banners reading, Stop the War and Peace and Solidarity for the People in Ukraine. A rights group said more than 668 people had been detained in 36 cities in Russia, where demonstrations against the war in Ukraine have typically been met with a heavy police response. A far-right group staged a small pro-Russia protest in the Serbian capital of Belgrade. Ukraine's foreign ministry tweeted Saturday that Russian forces shelled a mosque in Mariupol where 80 people were sheltering. Iran has claimed responsibility for a missile barrage that struck early Sunday near a sprawling U.S. consulate complex in the northern Iraqi city of Erbil. Tehran said it was retaliation for an Israeli strike in Syria that killed two members of its Revolutionary Guard. No injuries were reported in the attack, but it marked a significant escalation in hostilities between the U.S. and Iran. Tensions between the longtime foes have often played out in Iraq, where the government is allied with both countries. The U.S. defense official said it was still uncertain exactly how many missiles were fired and exactly where they landed. A second U.S. official said there was no damage at any U.S. government facility and no indication that the target was the consulate building. Neither the Iraqi official nor the U.S. officials were authorized to discuss the event with the media. They each spoke to AP on condition of anonymity. A recent spill of crude oil in the Pacific Ocean off the uh, coast of Peru has had a devastating effect on more than 2,500 small-scale fishermen. January through March is usually a period of intense activity for the anglers. But after the January 15th spill of nearly 12,000 barrels of oil in front of the Repsol refinery, they are finding fewer and fewer fish on their hooks and in their nets, Peru has characterized the spill as its worst ecological disaster. A report by United Nations experts estimate that about 2,100 tons of crude oil spilled. The president of the International Paralympic Committee, Andrew Parsons, has expressed hopes for peace as the Winter Olympics closed in Beijing, but he avoided mentioning Russia's war in Ukraine. The closing ceremony marked the end of an almost six-week run for international sports in the Chinese capital. It began with the opening of the Winter Olympics on February 4th. The next Summer Olympics and Paralympics are scheduled for 2024 in Paris. An Iranian news website close to the country's leadership says Iran has decided to temporarily suspend its secret Iraqi brokered talks aimed at de defusing years-long tensions with regional rival Saudi Arabia. The Sunday report came a day after Saudi Arabia carried out its largest, its, its largest known mass execution in modern history. The kingdom put to death 81 people convicted of crimes ranging from killings to belonging to militant groups, a group that activists believe include over three dozen Shiites. Saudi Arabia's executions of Shiites have stirred regional unrest in the past. Iran is the largest Shiite Muslim country in the world.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.